Thank you. Let me start off by saying good evening. And let me thank the Barack, the Barack Obama Democratic Club for providing me with the opportunity to come out and speak to you tonight. I greatly appreciate this opportunity. But more than anything else, I greatly appreciate the opportunity to talk to the people of Congressional District 13. When I thought about coming out tonight, I had some hesitation about doing so. Part of the reason why I had some hesitation about coming out was because I've been reading in the press that the alleged endorsement was already been given out. But the thing that changed my mind about coming out tonight was the fact that I met some incredible people at your fundraiser on Sunday. People who made it abundantly clear to me that they wanted somebody to represent them that had new ideas, that had a complete understanding about what it takes to actually get something done in Washington. I can tell you unequivocally, I am the only person who's a challenger to Charlie Rangel tonight who's actually worked in Washington, D.C. I'm the only person who is running as a challenger to Charlie Rangel who has worked for two presidents. I've been truly blessed as a young person who's grown up in Washington, D.C., in the inner city. A person who used to pass the White House every single day when I went to high school. Never ever thought I had the opportunity to work there. I had the opportunity to work for Bill Clinton, a person who led us to the greatest economic prosperity in the history of our country. I had the opportunity to work for Barack Obama, a person who had the greatest economic challenge to pull us out of since the Great Depression. These are the people I've had the opportunity to learn from. These are the people who've given me the opportunity to do the things that I think I'm prepared to do for you, the people of this congressional district. And the things that I think we need to focus on are the following. We need to think about what are the economic opportunities that will be available for us as a community for the next generation to come. We need to start thinking about what our community will look like in 2020. It may sound like it's far away off, but it's not. If you think about a young person who's in the fourth grade today, they will be graduating from high school that year. What kind of job opportunities would that young person have? If they want to be an entrepreneur, what kind of resources will they have to actually create a business? What kind of educational opportunities will they have if they're interested in going to, to post-secondary education schools? Those are the kind of things that we need to be thinking about today. And I believe that I'm the right person to bring about change for this community now. Change is a very important thing. Barack Obama talked about it continuously when he ran for president the last time. So what is it that we want that change to be for us as a community? I think we need to think about this. What are the economic consequences for doing nothing? What are the economic consequences for us actually selling for the status quo? We need to bring about change. And as much as I respect Charlie Rangel, who I have a great amount of respect for, I think he's done an incredible job and has a good legacy as a legislative person in Washington, D.C. But the time has come for us to move on as a community. 40 years is enough. And the people who are talking about running, they haven't done their job at all. Some of them haven't even done what they need to do for the communities they represent today. And so you're going to tell me now that we're going to take the risk of sending those individuals to Washington, D.C. where they have no understanding what it takes to actually get something done in Washington, D.C. People will say to you, well, you would be a junior member of Congress. That's absolutely true. But let me say this. Charlie Rangel is a person who's been there for 40 years, and he's lost his chairmanship. He doesn't have the ability to even vote on his own committee anymore. And so all the resources that he brought to the table were incredible at that time in order to get things done. He doesn't have that ability anymore. The ability I have is this. I understand how Washington, D.C. works. I know the people who can get things done. I know most of the people who work in the White House. I've had the ability to work with congressional members, Republicans and Democrats. And that can make a difference to this congressional district. And if we're talking about moving seriously towards the future, <coughs> please look at my candidacy, what it is I bring to the table. Those are the things I think will make a difference in your lives. And when you start to think about the kind of world you want to see for your children, your grandchildren, again, think about who it is you send to Washington. This is not about being nationalistic. This is not being about having someone who's black, white, Asian, or Latino. It's about sending the right person to Washington, D.C. to do the right job for you, the people who deserve to have the best re representation possible in Congressional District 13. So I thank you for allowing me to come out and speak tonight. And I will be more than happy to take questions and do whatever else the process allows us to do throughout this uh, uh, forum tonight. Thank, thank you, you very coming. much. We have one question over here. Um, you mentioned you worked in both Clinton and Obama administrations. Yes. Could you amplify um, what you actually did? I'll be more than happy to tell you what I did. I had several jobs when I worked for former President Clinton. First thing I did is I worked as the Deputy Director of President Scheduling Advance in the President's Office. 
The next thing I did is I went to the agriculture department as an assistant press secretary. I then went back to the agriculture department again to be deputy chief of staff for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It's an agency that has more than 100,000 employees at the time and an $18 billion budget. Uh, it was responsible for the WIC program, the food stamp program, the school lunch program. We fed more people across this country than anybody else on any single day. I actually came to Harlem in 2001 to work for former President Clinton as his domestic policy advisor, his foundation on 125th Street. I served in that capacity for four and a half years. When I worked for President Obama, I worked as the national political director at the Democratic National Committee. And by the way, my wife was actually the first African-American woman ever to be deputy chief of staff at the White House for President Obama. Uh, so those are the jobs. <coughs> thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Thank you very much.